This section of the tour starts at the Dayval Square, the corner of Point Street and Allen's Avenue. Here we have the Manchester Street's power station. It's now gas-fired, used to be coal-fired. This side of the street, that brick building, is the new nursing school for URI and Rick. And then you have some new fancy apartment building. This is the Point Street Bridge. As you can see, it used to be a swivel bridge. It doesn't swivel anymore because with the hurricane barrier, nobody can um, come through with the big boat. So anything that comes through there can actually get under the bridge. Going up the other way, you're looking at downtown and the nursing school, the new buildings, and the new pedestrian bridge. The new pedestrian bridge is pretty cool. This is what used to be a highway. I-195 used to go right through here. This is now all going to be redeveloped. Some of it over by the river is a park, but over here, these, build, these, these lots are all designed to be built. Goes in both directions. All this is what they keep planning that the whole city will be like. Someday there'll be a modern city here, but um, we don't believe them. We're now in Fox Point. This is the business district on Wickenden Street. This is what your tour would be, is on this street. A lot of little restaurants, shops, um, art, antiques, um, tattoos, whatever you're looking for. Caters to tourists, upscale residents. The east side is a peninsula with a spine running from all the way from the, the ocean all the way up to Pawtucket. Divides two watersheds, Narragansett Bay and the uh, Meshasek. This is Hope Street, basically the center of the east side. It's the road that goes up the ridge to the highest point. We'll go by there later. More of Wickenden Street, more shops, tattoos. This is the Varton Gregorian Elementary School. Varton Gregorian was a president of Brown University also really um, helped with the gentrification of this area. As we noted, there used to be 1,800 kids in this neighborhood. Now there are about 600, maybe 800. Moved out a lot of the Cape Verdean and Portuguese families that used to work on the waterfront. And um, now it's a lot of students and um, young professionals. You're looking at the entrance to the um, India Point Park. India Point was where the boats used to go to India. It was a totally industrial area, turned into a park in the last 50 years. Um, really nice, got waterfront. It's a really nice place. And um, I take my niece down there to do nature tours. George M. Cohen, the Yankee Doodle Dandy himself, was raised in this neighborhood. Still on Wickenden Street, you got the Boys and Girls Clubs, you got the Community Library, you got water parks, you got playgrounds, real assets. You've got an elderly high rise in the background. Looking south from Gano Street, you got 195, and you've got India Point Park south of here. Turning around, looking north, you're looking north on Gano Street. Supposedly, that little um, platform there is where Roger Williams first stepped off the boat when he came into Rhode Island, being chased out by the Puritans of Massachusetts. The Narragansett people welcomed him here. You're pretty far from the river here, about three, four hundred feet, but they tell you that this was, that tells you that this was all fill from the, in the recent years. You know, if you look here, you can't hardly see the river. I, all of this is filled. None of this was here. This was all wetlands and marsh and swamp. It's one of the reasons that Providence was such a great place is it had so much food from all the wetlands, fish. This is what's left of Portuguese culture around here. There's a Portuguese club. There's the Holy Rosary Band Society. You got the park there. Yesterday, the remnants of the hurricane came through 
So, um, there are trees down everywhere and um, branches everywhere. So the Parks Department is cleaning up. We're now on Power Street. Lovely name. We're going to walk up Power Street and go over the spine of the east side and back down to Benefit Street. One of the things we ask you to look for here is what do the houses look like? You're going to look, you know, modest triple deckers here. One of the things you're going to notice is as you go up Power Street, every block the houses get a little fancier. And where we are right now is in front of Mission Electric Bicycle. Talk about um, showing the changes in the city. A store devoted entirely to electric bicycles. We're at Governor in Power. Some pretty nice looking houses, still multifamily, often filled with students. This way, there more of them are, are single family. Look at the fancy sidewalks. You can really tell a, a neighborhood in this city how rich it is by how many trees and how well tended they are. It's pretty obvious that um, the heat island effect is always in the poorest neighborhoods because those have fewer trees. We're at the corner of Cook and Brown. I mean, Cook and Power. You got some pretty fancy houses here. I don't know, I probably can't show them to you, but maybe I can zoom in on one. You know, you see a fence like that and an entrance like that, you know there's some money around. You know, these are single family houses. Um, doctors, lawyers, professors. We're on Hope Street, really close to the Brown campus. The building right across the street is the Rhode Island Historical Society Research Center. These are buildings that belong to Brown. This one belongs to Brown. Corner of Brook and Power, fire station, mostly Brown University buildings. I wanted to stop here just because Brook Street is named after what used to be a brook. There was a brook running all the way down the hill. This is the John Brown House. The Brown family made a lot of money in the slave trade. And what they didn't make in the slave trade, they made in the cotton mill industry. Two highly oppressive industries, both on the picking the cotton, the planting the cotton, and the spinning the cotton. Helps, he helped found the, the Brown family was one of some of the money behind the Slater Mill, the first industrial mill in North America. The Black Heritage Society put up this plaque. I don't know, you probably can't read it on the screen, but it says, the home of John Brown, reflecting the wealth and position gained from his lucrative career as a slave trader, privateer, China trade merchant, and patriot, a project of the Rhode Island Black Heritage Society. We're now on Benefit Street. This is one of the oldest streets in America with some of the oldest housing. You have more 18th and 19th, early 19th century housing on this block than, than on this mile of road than almost any place in America except maybe like Charleston or Savannah. Back in the 50s, they started gentrifying it, moved all the black families out, moved a lot of them over to University Heights. We're at the corner of, of um, Benefit and Benevolent. This is the first Unitarian church. It's been around for 300 years. Not the building, but the congregation. That's the Hope Club, one of those places that was private clubs for rich folks. And right over there is some of the buildings right downtown. That over there is the old Industrial National Bank building, the Superman building. Somebody thinks they're going to fix it up, but I think one of these days they're going to blow it up for a Hollywood movie. This is the Rhode Island Superior and Supreme Court building. I've been right across the street from the court is the Athenaeum. It's a private non-profit library open to the public. Um, when they're not locked down for the pandemic, um, lots of interesting programs there of public interest. On this side, of the, on the other side of the street, beyond the stop sign, you have the Rhode Island School of Design, um, one of the famous art schools in America. At the corner of Benefit and Waterman Street, 
right across the street is the RISD Museum. You've got some academic buildings. We're looking at the back side of the first Baptist church in America. This is literally the first Baptist church in America. Not the, this is not the original building, but this is the church that was started by rich folks who demanded that Roger Williams preach to them at, at a church. He felt like you didn't need a church to get close to God, but um, businessmen always want churches because that's where they do business deals. We're just looking at Benefit Street. Lots of good fancy housing here. Some very expensive housing here. But, um, you know, a nice tree. Actually very nice to walk in on hot summer days because it's shady. But um, I wanted to show you this. We're not going to get to see this on this t video tour. We're not going to get to go by the State House. So this is your best shot of the State House that you're going to get from this tour. Here you can see more of the State House than just the dome. We are coming up to the end of Benefit Street where it meets North Main Street. North Main is the main road going to Pawtucket. It's been a road for about 5,000 years or something like that. It was the path that the Narragansetts used to get from downtown Providence to downtown Pawtucket. Corner in North Main and Benefit, one of the key intersections in the city. This is the old road going north. You've come up the hill from the waterfront. University Heights, you can see the sign there. That is an apartment complex that was built to replace a whole lot of housing. There was like 10,000 people displaced here. They didn't replace nearly all the apartments and a lot of people dispersed. It was a form of gentrification even though it's low income housing. We're at the corner of Olney and Pratt going up the hill back up towards Hope High School. We're at the corner of Brown, Camp and Olney. This is the area, Olney Street area, where um, there were two race riots, 1829-1831. Um, it was a black neighborhood and um, lots of stuff going on and good businesses. And um, what happened was is that the white folks didn't like it. And um, when the city rich people had to call out the militia, at the governor for the militia to, to suppress the riot, they decided to incorporate so they could tax people and have their own police force. Hope High School, one of the large comprehensive high schools in the city. There's about four or five of them. There's a lot of little high schools. Um, this is a school that struggled for generations. And also, um, Hope, it's the state motto, but it also used to be the um, preferred method of birth control. Another view of Hope High School and the houses along Hope Street. We're going to go up the hill to the highest point in the city. Corner of Hope and Doyle. That's the Brown Observatory. This is the highest place in the city. And um, there's a telescope in that dome. And you can come here once a week and look at the stars. This is an area of mental health campuses. You have both the Grodin Center and you have the Providence Mental Health Centers. We're a few blocks away from the observatory. Just walking down Hope Street. We're looking at the Rochambeau Library. We're along Hope Street. We're almost to Rochambeau Avenue. Um, this is a great library. It's got a powerful friends group and um, probably the best funded because it's got the most powerful friends group. We're at the corner of Rochambeau and Summit. Looking north down Summit, that's the Summit neighborhood. Miriam Hospital is about five, six blocks away. I live in that neighborhood. We're going to follow continuing down Rochambeau. Standing at the corner of Camp and Rochambeau. Rochambeau was a French general who came over with a bunch of troops in the American Revolution, walked them all the way from Newport up through Providence, camped on Camp Street, and then walked down to Yorktown 
where they helped General Washington beat General Cornwallis and end the Revolutionary War. Um, Camp Street is gentrifying. It is not completely gentrified. There are still quite a few low-income people, people of color in the neighborhood. We are at the Camp Street Ministries um, on Camp Street, a, uh, a very important social service agency, food, clothing, all kinds of things. And right over here is the Mount Hope Neighborhood Association. And uh, we're at the corner of Cypress and Camp. We're right next to the Billy Taylor Park. There's a market near here. Park has basketball courts, a community garden, one of the great ones, um, water park, a real asset. We're at the corner of North Main and Cyprus. The cemetery is about 300 years old, but I do videos in there of all the wild animals. Got a fire station and a very busy place. Next stop, Oneyville.